God's blueprint for your life can be found on the pages of Scripture. The basis of all truth is God's holy word. We invite you to join the Beulah Baptist Church in Bennett, North Carolina for Truth For Today with Dr. Neil Jackson. Dr. Jackson's verse-by-verse -verse preaching will encourage you in your journey of life and answer your greatest questions. So open your Bible and your heart to hear Truth For Today. Daily Essentials for Christians is Dr. Jackson's sermon series on the fruit of the Spirit. These nine characteristics are traits that every Christian should possess. This series will encourage any believer desiring to live the Spirit-filled life. For your gift of $50 or more, we will send you this series and you'll be joining hands with us as we reach the world together for Jesus. So when you write or call, make sure you request the series Daily Essentials for Christians with your gift of $50 or more. Goodness is not a feeling. Goodness is not looking good or feeling good. Goodness is doing good and being good. Now understand, goodness, you cannot muster it up. Goodness comes only from God. So it's not something oh, that you're going to go out of here and say, okay, the preacher preached on goodness. I'm going to go and I'm going to be good. To be good, it comes from God and you got to submit to God in your life. Romans chapter 3 verse 12. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. So it's not that you're going to, oh, I'm going to be good. My daddy used to tell me, if I've heard it once, I've heard it a thousand times. When we would be leaving, my daddy would always tell us, I love you, be good. Now for the longest time, I didn't understand, why is my daddy telling me to be good? Why don't he say, hey, don't get in trouble? He never said, don't get in trouble. Now that was kind of understood, because if I got in trouble out there, I was getting in big trouble at home. He always told me, you be good. Because if you're being good, you're in a sense being godly because goodness comes from God. Paul said, Romans chapter 7, verse 19. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. He says, hey, I try to do good and I just fall back and I do the wrong thing. So you can't muster up goodness. The Holy Spirit gives you goodness through, through Him. Goodness is a heart thing. Matthew chapter 12 verse 35. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. So goodness comes because you are in Christ. And Christ bears His fruit through your life. Let me give you another verse. Mark chapter 10, verse 17. The rich young ruler comes to Jesus. And this is what he said. Mark 10, verse 17. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled down to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. So don't miss it. There's only one person that's good, that is God. So if you're going to be good, it's going to come from God. God is good. Psalm 34, verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. So God is good. God's works are good. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good, 
to them that love God, to them that are called according to His purpose. So not only is God good, God's works are good. So a lot of times we see this thing that's going on in our life and we say, no, that's not good. But not only is God good, everything He does in our life, it is good or it brings forth good. God's ways are good. Psalm 119 verse 39. Turn away my reproach which I fear. For thy judgments or thy ways are good. So God is good. His works are good. His ways are good. James chapter 1 verse 17 says his gifts are good. Are good. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So, to talk about good, we have to talk about God. You cannot separate the two because without God, there is no goodness. So we come to Galatians chapter 5 and one of the fruits of the Spirit, one of the characteristics of being filled with the Spirit is you are good. Say, all right, pastor, that was a long rabbit trail through the country. Just bottom line it. Just tell me bottom line. What do I need to do to be good? Micah 6 verse 8. He has showed thee, O man, what is good. Okay, fruit of the Spirit is goodness. What are you talking about? What am I supposed to do if I'm going to be good? Here's the verse. He has showed thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord Require of thee. So very literally, God's will for your life is that you be good. So when my daddy would say, hey boys, be good. This is what he meant. Three ways goodness is demonstrated in your life. Sermons entitled, Be Good. So number one, if you want to be good, number one. Goodness is demonstrated in the way you act. Goodness is demonstrated in the way you act. Look at verse 8. What doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly? The first way we demonstrate goodness is to do justly. You say, what is that talking about? We are to do justly or we are to do justice? Toward every person. Justice is treating people or situations in a fair and honest and right manner. It's doing the right thing in every situation. Amos chapter 5 verse 24. But let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. So, all right, be good. How do I do it? You always do what's right. Or... You always treat people fairly. Even when they don't treat you fairly, you always do what's right. You always show justice to everyone. The way to combat the wickedness in our society is to pursue and to promote justice. Or or fairness. Or or honesty or integrity so therefore I'm not going to let somebody's lack of ethics control my ethics I'm just going to do good to them I'm going to treat them fairly I'm going to treat them honestly I'm going to be just with them Christians should be characterized by their honest dealings with everyone Now, a lot of times we will have to confess. People will say, be careful about that Christian. He'll swindle you. It's an oxymoron. It should not go together. Christians should be honest. They should be just. They should be fair. John Wesley, the, the founder of the Methodist Church, he said this. Do all the good you can, 
by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, for as long as you possibly can. So what are we saying? Do right. Be just. Be fair. Be honest. Be ethical. So if you want to be good, it's in how you act. But look back at the verse again. It says to do justly. So, so this justice is not just something that you know. It's not just an intellectual thing. It's something you demonstrate. So we may know this is right and this is wrong. But we have to get the, the justice out of our mind and into our actions. So we are to do justly. You should treat people fairly. Honestly. Even when they mistreat you. You say, but, 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 but that's, th how do I do that? Hey, listen, here's how you do it. You yield to the Holy Spirit to produce His fruit in your life. And you just do good. Think about it. There's no better example of this than Jesus. He went about, it says in Acts, that He went about doing good. He just treated people fairly. He treated people honestly. He was just with everybody. So if you want to be good, number one, it's demonstrated in how you act. Number two, it's demonstrated in how you react. Now, you're in Micah chapter 6. I want you to look up at verse 1. Hear ye now what the Lord saith. Arise. Contend thou before the mountains, and let the hills hear thy voice. Hear ye, O mountains, the Lord's controversy, and ye strong foundations of the earth. For the Lord hath a controversy, or the Lord hath a problem with this people, and he will plead with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done unto thee, and wherein have I wearied thee? Testify against me, for I brought thee out of the land of Egypt." And I redeemed thee out of the house of servants. I sent before thee Moses and Aaron and Miriam. All my people remember now that Balak the king of Moab consulted. And what Balaam the son of Beor answered him from Shittim unto Gilgal. That ye may know the righteousness of the Lord. So here's what he's saying. You are to do justice. The secondly, we are to love mercy. Well, how can we show mercy? How do we do that? For the first five verses says, Remember how God is merciful to you. Now listen. This is where rubber meets the road. The only people that need mercy in our lives are the people who don't deserve it. If they deserved it, it would not be mercy. So therefore, guilty people need mercy. But I don't know about you, I struggle. Sometimes I, I, I shake, if not outwardly, inwardly. With guilty people, guilty people deserve judgment. But one of the fruits of the Spirit is, is according to this verse, we demonstrate Mercy. Look at what the verse says. Verse 8. To do justice. To love. Mercy. We respond. To God's mercy to us. By showing mercy. To others. A lot of times. When we are out eating in a home. Or we have people come over to our home. We will take the dishes. And we will pass them around. So let's just say a lot of times. The big meat item. It will come to me like first. Somebody say here pastor. Here's the roast. Or here's the, here's the chicken. The fried chicken. A lot of grease. Here, here's the filet mignon. 
and they will start the tray with me. Well, what would be wrong for everybody else is if I receive the fried chicken with a lot of grease and I put it down in front of me and say, thank you, man, I love this. this. This fried chicken looks good and I start digging in and chowing down. Well, what you're going to do if you are looking at me and if you're at the table there is, hey, man, share the wealth. Don't hog it. Share it. You got all that, 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 that fried chicken. Come on, let us in on it as well. And you would be right. I would be a hog. I would be a hoarder. I would be selfish if I, if I hogged all the fried chicken. It would be wrong. It would be dirty pool. Well, so it is with you and God's mercy. And listen. God gives you a big old platter of monstrous helping of mercy. And you're good at, oh, I love this mercy. Oh, this mercy is great. Oh, give me, give me seconds on that, 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 that mercy. This is great. But you're hogging it. You were never intended to hog mercy. You were intended to give mercy. Now understand, you give mercy to people who don't deserve it. You give mercy to guilty people. You give mercy to difficult people. You say, Pastor, why would I give mercy to difficult, hard, antagonistic people? Because God gave it to you. And one of the ways that you're good. You're fair with everybody. And you give mercy. But hold on a second. It doesn't say you give mercy. Look back at the verse. Micah chapter 6 verse 8. I I, I struggled with this one. What it says. You are to do justly. And then it says you are to love Mercy. You understand what that means. Now listen. I love banana pudding. Had some banana pudding today for lunch. As a matter of fact, the, 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 the lady came over when we were done eating. And she gave me this monstrous take-home plate with nothing but banana pudding. Oh, my tongue started. And I already had a couple of helpings already. My tongue started slapping my brain. Woo! That's breakfast tomorrow. Yeah, banana pudding. Now listen, I love banana pudding. I can cut a jig on banana pudding. I mean, you get me fired up. I'll get my hanky going. I'll start jumping up. Woohoo! The Lord is in the house because we got banana pudding. I love banana pudding. It doesn't say we're supposed to love banana pudding. I don't think it's a sin. I think it's, it, it, it's godly. But it says... It says we are to love mercy. Now listen, I can wave my hanky at banana pudding. I can cut a jig. I can start jumping up and down. Woohoo! Banana pudding. I don't do that with mercy. I don't do that with guilty people. Oh, bah, bah, bah. They don't. They, they, they just don't deserve my mercy. And I don't deserve his mercy. So it doesn't mean I'm just to be merciful. I'm to love it. Now listen. I love receiving it. I love that my God is a merciful God. But when the fruit of the Spirit is demonstrating itself in my life. There is a guilty person. That deserves my condemnation. That deserves my wrath. That deserves my judgment. And I am never more like God. Than when I show him mercy. When my daddy said be good. You know what he meant? Be fair. Be right. Be just. With everybody. And to. 
Love banana pudding. I mean, love mercy. Third thing my daddy meant. Goodness is seen in how you act. Goodness is demonstrated or seen in how you react. Thirdly, goodness is seen in how you subtract. Uh, Look at the last part of this verse. He has showed thee, O man, what is good, what the Lord requires of thee, to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. So the secret of godliness and the secret of goodness, which you can't really be good without being godly, the secret is walking with God. Walk carries the idea of progression. So when I am walking with God, I am moving. I am moving in His direction. So if you're not growing in your faith, you're not walking with God. Amos said, can two walk together except they be agreed? So therefore, I am in agreement with God. I am walking toward God. I am getting close to God. So what does it mean to be good? To be just, to love mercy, and to walk with God. But look what it says. It says humbly. It means to bring wisely. It describes a guest in a home with proper etiquette. So when we become before God, we are to show proper etiquette toward God. You you guys have been to the nicer restaurants where, where the waiter has been trained and he knows the proper etiquette. He knows all of those forks and what you're supposed to do. I mean, he's just very mannerly. That's the way we are to be toward God. We're not just to be crude. We're not to be pushing. We're not to be demanding in our walk with God we are to be humble we are to have the proper view of God we are to have respect for God what are you going to be remembered for when you're dead and gone I mean a lot of us think that's going to be way off into the future and we don't have to worry about that But I believe it's going to come on us sooner than we think. And when everybody's walking by your casket and they're looking down at you, they say, oh, he looks so good. What are they going to think about you? That sure was an honest man. And he was fair and ethical, even though people took advantage of him and did him wrong. He was fair and honest with them. Man, that was the most merciful guy in our whole community. He just gave the mercy of God that he received. And that man, he walked with God. He wasn't perfect. He wasn't the richest man in town. But that was a godly man. He had a walk. He had a communion. He had a prayer life. He had had a, a time with God where he fellowshiped with God in his word every day. That man walked with God, or that woman did. The Scottish Reformation, there was a guy by the name of George Wishart. George Wishart, he lived out this verse. He he was just, he was honest, he was merciful, but he had a backbone of steel, had a backbone of iron, When it came to this book, it was during a time of great persecution. He would not budge. He would not bend over his stand on Scripture. Well, the authorities of that time, they said, you deny and you stop promoting Scripture. We're going to burn you at the stake. This good man, this godly man, he wouldn't bend. He he was resolute in the face of difficulty. So this George Wishart, they tied him up, tied up his hands, tied up his feet, and they had all of these Bibles around him, all of this wood around him. They doused him with gas. And they said, what is your last words? This This is what he prayed. Christian brothers and sisters... Be not offended at the word of God on account of what you see 
prepared for me. Love the word. And suffer patiently for the gospel's sake. Should any of you called upon to endure persecution, fear not those who can destroy the body, for they, they cannot slay your soul. I have served Christ with love, with mercy, with gladness, with goodness. And I would gladly do it again. With that, they lit the match and they set him on fire and burned him to his death. Out there in the distance was his supporters and his enemies. Well, in that group was a young man who stood there with clenched fists, wiping the tears from his face and his eyes as he watched his hero give his life for his faith. And there, that man said, if he's willing to die for his faith, I'm willing to live the rest of my life for the faith that he gave me. The man's name. He set Scotland on fire with the gospel. He went from border to border. Preaching Jesus. Proclaiming this book. Declaring the way of the Lord. And God used him mightily. His name. John Knox. And John Knox was influenced by the testimony of this one person that most of us have never heard, George Wissart. Here's my word to you. People are watching you. Maybe you're not the biggest and most notorious person around here. But by your stand, God, I want to be a good person. I want to treat everybody fairly and right. I want to love mercy and I want to walk with you even if it means suffering for it. There may be a John Knox born out of your suffering. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Truth For Today. Our prayer is that God's Word has ministered to your deepest need and answered many of your questions about life. Truth For Today is only able to broadcast on this station through the regular prayers and financial support of God's people. Would you consider becoming a monthly partner of Truth For Today? You may mail your gifts to Truth For Today, Post Office Box 104, Bennett, North Carolina, 27208. If you would like to receive a copy of today's message, please request this sermon with your donation of any amount. If you would like to donate by credit card, you may call 336-581-3170. Be assured that God's Word has the answer for your every need. And join us next time for Truth For Today.